gracias por tu historia. Viaje a México 23, oh, I'm sorry, this one. <laughs> Del, <laughs> thank you for your story. You're a very natural storyteller. One of you know, I've been to Mexico like 25 times, and I gave a speech a while back and uh, a couple weeks ago, and I said the greatest gift you can give is travel. So thank you for your gift of having me travel back to Mexico in a way that I haven't been and I hadn't even thought about, which is the hot air balloon. What I want to tell you tonight is what you did good, what you could do better, and what you did best. So start off with what you did good, looking at both the vocal variety analysis and also what you asked for, which is in there. First of all, as I said, you are a natural storyteller. You're very expressive, naturally, in the way you say things, and it comes across when you tell stories. You're very organized. You, talk, you told us about the three different examples, and you even use excellent uh, body language because you said one, two, three. You led us through stuff. You said mountains. You, you use your body to lead us through stuff. Another reason why you're such a, gr a good storyteller. And then your story was organized in a chronological manner. So you took care of all of it. Also the words that you use. You use what I call sensual words. And I don't mean that in the male kind of sensual words, right? <laughs> I mean that in all five senses of words. The words that you use may evoke either tastes or sights or sounds in all of us. So again, all those things added together, you are such a good natural storyteller. What could you have been better at? In terms of rate, when you tell us a word in Spanish, and I speak, as you know, some broken Spanish, but even the word Popotec, which is the name of the, the volcano, most people in Mexico just say Popotec because the word is so long. And you said it, it was like Popotec, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> when you hit a word in Spanish that you know, even in Spanish, just slow it down. You know, so say Popo. Catepetul. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll know that it's a confusing word, which is why you said it slow. It gives you that change of rate and keeps us a little bit more engaged. Also, your crutch word is um. I don't have a clicker with me, but I like to use a clicker. Every time you say a crutch word, have somebody click you, and believe me, it works. <coughs> your brain will be like, oh, I don't want to get clicked, and it will stop you from going um. And that is your crutch word. Also, in terms of better, volume was kind of basic the entire time. You have a good, natural, up, like here, volume, so everyone can hear you, but find places in the story where you have to say something a little bit softer to bring us in. And then go back to your natural. Remember, it's vocal variety. So your natural volume is good, but find a place where you can go really high or really low. In terms of what you did best, vocal variety in your pitch and tone. So many examples. We're flying. Stop. Don't move. Big yellow. Some tamales. Some tortillas. You take a specific word and you put that emphasis on it. The only thing that I think that can take that to the next level, and again, this is what really makes you that awesome storyteller. You use words that engage us. And you, you ask me to look for engagement, you don't have to worry about engagement. You are naturally engaging. The only thing that I would suggest to take that better and make it awesome is instead of saying this beautiful, say this beautiful. Pick the words that you want to emphasize. Because sometimes the words that you choose to emphasize may not be the most expressive word in your sentence. Uh, I heard your last speech. Was, uh, had the opportunity to evaluate this one, and I look forward to hearing the next great story from Adela. Thank you. Thank you.